welcome back. Today, we are going to be getting Katie's perspective from her first marathon. I ran my first marathon, the Walt Disney World Marathon, back in 2020, and I did a video kind of going over all of my thoughts from it, what I learned, what I wore, and now we're going to go and get Katie's thoughts, as she also just ran her first marathon, the Walt Disney World Marathon. Of 2022. Yep. And the first marathon weekend back as well. Yeah. Let's go all the way back to training. Uh, you did use a specific training program, right? Kind of. So I pretty much used the Disney Free program, which is a Jeff Galloway run walk program for beginners. Uh, I stuck to it pretty well until December hit, and then I think I got a little too lazy. But for the most part, I stuck with the recommended days and mileage and everything. Jeff Galloway usually has you go up to the race distance in his training plan, so his plan actually goes all the way up till 26. I missed a couple of long runs, or I cut them short for whatever reason, and I only got up to about 18. I think I definitely paid for that during the race, but that's kind of where I fell off the plan a little bit. Okay, so moving a little bit closer to the race, the day before, what did you do for your hydration and fueling or meals? So the day before, um, I mostly just drank a ton of water for a few days before. The day before, I also drank a few bottles of water with a noon tablet in it. I think I drank two of those and then just tried to, to keep the water consumption up. For dinner that night, we actually ordered uh, Uber Eats to the hotel and we got, yeah, we got macaroni grill and they have, just like most Italian restaurants, they have like a create your own pasta option. So I was able to do pasta with red sauce and just a couple of veggies thrown in there. Uh, it was really good and good thing to keep in mind if you don't want to be like driving around Disney looking for uh, whatever works for your stomach. So it's the night before, you're getting ready, let's talk about the gear that you chose. We had a fairly lucky weather at the beginning, at least it wasn't. That being said, it wasn't like super duper cold. I went ahead and ran in um, shorts, which is what I prefer to run in. And I wear 100% all the time um, Seneda shorts or leggings. This time I specifically wore a pair of their eight inch biker shorts, I believe is the, what they're called. They have great pockets, great small business company that I would recommend to any girl who likes pockets in their leggings and shorts. For my top, I actually wore a shirt that Lake gave me for Christmas from Raw Threads. Um, I really like running in Raw, thre raw Threads. Um, they're really, really comfortable. And if you can't read it, it's a little funny text, but it says Silencio Bruno, which was kind of like my mantra <laughs> while running from uh, Luca. <laughs> my running shoes right now are Brooks Ghosts. I actually switched into these about halfway through training and so far, I actually really, really like them. I think I'll be continuing with them. I had my uh, my running belt that I usually run in. So my shorts always have pockets, but I always, for half marathons and up, feel like I need a little extra space. So this is an Amphipod belt. I've had this since I started running. I've had this forever and it still works great. These are actually some leftovers that I didn't use during the marathon, but I did use at least one pack of the Cliff blocks. They fit really well in this. They're like the perfect size. <laughs> so I had those and then I also used several of the Honey Stinger chew packs. This was just an extra that we had left. Headphones. These are, I don't even know what brand these are. Whenever I run ever, even at Disney, I always do like the one in one out method so that I can hear everything around me. <laughs> Yeah, and they're just, they're like off-brand, uh, like the Power Beat style, uh, so they have the over-the-ear clip. Yeah, yeah. I have started running, though, since in the Aftershocks, which is now just Shocks. I actually really like this, so I think I'll be switching to those full-time. My Garmin. And that's the venue, right? Yes, yes. And I really like it. it um, part of the reason I got this watch was for the marathon 
so that I could load music into the watch to listen to so I didn't have to use up the battery on my phone because I was out there for a very long time and I was I wanted to make sure everything did not die. <laughs> and you did run with your phone with you, right? Yes, I usually always run with my phone. It fits in my pocket. I am a slower runner, so near the end, I like to pull it out and see my friends and my family and my husband sending me encouraging messages. <laughs> so, and then also, if you run with your phone, you have a camera in case you wanna take pictures or very nifty visor. This is a local running store print on there, but the brand is Boko Gear, which we have several things. Um, Boko Gear, yeah. Made by Boko Gear, and they're really, they're running specific gear and they work really well. My Gooders, another Christmas present. I was very grateful to have these because I also made sure to pack my Uthus for after the race. So happy I had those. So marathon weekend, you have to be up pretty early. What time did we go to bed and what time did we get up? We were in bed before 5.30. I probably fell asleep closer to like six, six o'clock, 6.30. And that was like true for almost the whole weekend because you were doing dopey. So I've always heard it said that just as important as the night before sleep or are the couple of nights before. So we did really good as far as getting enough rest. We woke up, I want to say about 2.30. I know I got up, I tried to eat um, some cereal, uh, which is what I had trained eating before my races. I could definitely tell that I was nervous because it was like hard to get food down. <laughs> I just did not feel hungry. So I just kept trying to eat that. You said we got out and got on the eight, or the three o'clock bus. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the race. We do the uh, long walk out to the corrals, what, or starting groups. What was your start group? About what time did you end up starting then? My start group was start group four, and I was, I would say middle to back of the start group. Um, it was definitely not up near the front, just because um, pretty much every time we had the opportunity to take like a porta potty break on the way to the crowds, because like you said, it is a walk out there. We tried to take that. We weren't there like right when the crowds opened, so I wasn't in the front and that was fine. <laughs> I was already too slow, so <laughs> I didn't want to be run over. The race itself started about 4.50. My start group started, I should have looked this up, but it was around 5.15. I, I it was 15 minutes or so after the race was supposed to start, which was a lot faster than I thought I would be starting. Yeah, they did do the start waves very close yeah, together yeah. for the marathon. <laughs> because of how used I was to other races, I just felt very, very weird. How was the temperature uh, kind of in the early morning running through the, like basically when it's still dark? Um, up until the start, I was actually a little chilly. I had a sweatshirt that I threw away right um, right before we started. Starting out until the sun came up, great running temperature. Like I enjoyed every minute of the of the run until the sun came up. Do you remember about where you were when like the sun came up or the temperature started to at least feel more significantly hot? It was past Magic Kingdom. So the sun came up for me around mile nine, which is before Magic Kingdom, but we were still in that daybreak time as we were going through. It was on the other side. It was probably mile 14 or 15 where I started to notice that it was getting toasty out. Not too bad, but I think in my mind I knew I still had 10 miles left and that it was only gonna get hotter. And so then I started to get a little, a little worried at that point. Time-wise, that would have been about nine o'clock. And pace-wise through your first half, you looked pretty consistent. Uh, how did you feel kind of during that part? I felt great. I was taking it really easy. I was uh, doing a walk run overall pace that was was easy. I was not pushing myself at all in the first 13 miles and I felt really great. Once it averaged out, it was about a it was about 15. Through that first half of the course, what were crowds like? Um, crowds at the beginning were heavy. Um, so at the beginning of the race, when we were uh, running into Epcot and then right after we left Epcot, uh, we never really got to run on a, a big street for people to spread out. So it was crowded. Once we got on the big, is that World Drive that World goes Drive. to 
magic. Once we got there, things spaced out really well. And then little pinch points um, at certain parts of the race, but nothing, nothing really noticeable. So you said first half of the race, you were feeling good. And then second half, sun basically starts to come out, temperature rises. Talk kind of where it went from there. Yeah, I would say it went um, downhill <laughs> or bad. <laughs> no, it was it was fine. Around mile 17 or 18, which is the most that I went in my training, I started to really worry about whether I was going to finish and I slowed down a lot. <laughs> Part of the problem is after mile, probably about after mile 16, I started to lose track of my uh, nutrition intake. Part of that was because that's when it started to get really hot and I just did not feel like like eating anything. But I should have and you, you should too. You should stick to what you do in your training that works. I definitely started to feel that I hadn't reached those miles in my training yet. It was a struggle. My cardio, uh, my, you know, my breathing and my heart honestly felt fine. I think probably because I was moving so slow. What was slowing me down was, were my legs. Um, they were getting really heavy. I don't remember my feet hurting, but I did end up with really, really nasty blisters on both of my feet. So I'm sure there was some, some kind of pain happening there that I just don't remember. Basically, after you get out of Animal Kingdom, which is like right around mile 16, you get out of that area. Basically 16, 17, 18, 19 to 20 is like all on the road, all very hot in the sun. There's an uphill portion, and it's all very boring, basically until you get to uh, Hollywood Studios. Yes, so so that part was definitely the roughest part. Once you get to Hollywood, you're, you're fairly, uh, quote, safe, as long as you can keep moving forward. So I kept that in my mind. It's just like, I just gotta get to Hollywood. I mean, you're technically can be swept at any point, but that's kind of a, it was just something in my mind that helped me. Luckily, Disney offers really great on-course support. So they had um, sponges at like 17, 18. About 18. Which, that was wonderful. And I think I had forgotten that they usually do something like that. So when it came up, it was just so great. And then, and I don't know if I ever told you this, the guy who was handing out sponges, or they had multiple people, he gave me two. Like, he gave me one, and he's like, here, take another one. And I was like, yes, I need that. <laughs> I was, it felt so nice to wipe, like, your face, squeeze it on your head. And then um, there were two spots after that, I believe, one right before the Blizzard Beach parking lot, and then one about a mile after that, they were handing out bags of ice, um, like you would find at, like, the medical tent. And that was, that I think may have saved me. If we had not gotten that, I may not have made it through. <laughs> we should note at this point, the sun is fully out. There was no clouds out and it was about 80 degrees out, uh, if not a little bit hotter. Yeah, and probably on the road, cause this is, you're on basically like highway type roads. So it's 80 degrees, but you're also on asphalt with, with sun glaring back up. So um, is it, it was tough and other people were definitely feeling it too. I wasn't the only one. <laughs> I could notice um, lots of water. Several water stops were just giving people the full bottles of Dasani if they wanted them to take with them and so they could you know, pour it on their heads and stuff. Yeah, it definitely got rough out there. Getting to Hollywood was great. And then I don't know if it was Hollywood open when you went through yet or... No. No. <laughs> so that's one thing that's really fun about getting to Hollywood is it's fully open. And by the time I got there, it was like open, open. And there were crowds and people were, you know, going about their day. But there were also people who would come in and cheer. So uh, that, was, that was really nice to have the people who were cheering for you. Animal Kingdom, there were some guests in there, but not a lot. I think, I don't know how these people got in that early with no one else. But. The extra magic hour. Oh, okay, I didn't realize there was an extra magic hour, so that was nice too. But Hollywood is the first time you really get that, and then you get all the people who are like confused as to who are all these really slow, sweaty people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna backtrack real quick. Sure. You mentioned that your nutrition kind of fell off towards the end. What was the initial nutrition plan? Yeah, so um, so I actually took a, uh, a vanilla cliff goo or cliff, cliff gel, gel 
at the starting point. And actually I thought originally that I might've taken it a little too early, but then they let out the groups and I was like, that's perfect. So I actually brought with me to the corral about half a bottle of water and the cliff uh, gel so that I could take it and then throw those two things away. And then um, after that point, I do, I do about every 45 minutes as it would correspond to a water stop because I don't use gels on the course because I really don't like them, <laughs> but I need to take water with whatever I, whatever I eat. So I think I started with the honey stingers because I knew that this was what Disney was going to give us later um, and I wanted to like space out. <laughs> and so I would do half, half of a packet and then half the packet the next time and then um, I only took one of the one of the these packets during the actual course, but I did the same thing. I did half at one stop and half the other. And then um, I can't remember which mile it was, but they also do bananas um, twice. Um, I had a banana the first stop, which was near Animal Kingdom, so must it was, have been there was one basically right before Animal Kingdom. Yeah, right about uh, 14, 15 or so, and then one right after Animal Kingdom. Yep, and then I also actually ran with a bag of uh, pretzel sticks. I had a couple of those somewhere between 17 and 20 um, when it was getting really hot, both for the salt and both just to have something that wasn't a chewy, fruity candy in my mouth. <laughs> and that I think was maybe more of a mental break, but I enjoyed them and I probably will run with them again. I think that was a, a good thing to have. And then, um, the Milky Way that Disney gave us in Hollywood. <laughs> that was the other thing I had. So we talked about making it to Hollywood is kind of like your make or break point. Uh, once you get there, as long as you keep moving, most of the time you're not gonna get swept if you're keeping pretty close to pace. So what was it like kind of bringing it in the last uh, about four miles? So the last four miles, where I was in so much pain. <laughs> That's like, like I've never been, I've never hurt that bad over so, so many places in my body. Even like my back was starting to hurt because I think I was really tense. Um, obviously I was starting to get a little sunburned <laughs> from the sun. So what I got in my head that I wanted to do was I didn't want to straight walk the rest of the four miles. Like I didn't want to, just have that be all walking so I gave myself little like goals of I'm going to run from this point to this point and then I'll walk for a little bit like that were not anywhere near like the intervals that I had started with or any type of plan <laughs> it just kind of helped me keep moving so like when we got to the boardwalk I ran about half of the boardwalk and part of it was like people were there cheering for you and that helped me run the slowest run you've ever seen <laughs> with like the most shuffly feet you've ever seen. But I did it and then walked for a little bit. And then when we got to Epcot, I did the same thing. I ran for a little bit just because like, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. Something about the, the sad little shuffle run, run that I was able to do helped me keep going. Basically the exit, of Epcot and the world's largest, longest building, which is the new Guardians building. At that point, I was like, I'm gonna finish and I don't think I can run anymore. <laughs> like <laughs> the, the running was gone <laughs> and it was limping to the finish line. At that point, all of the little things that had kind of hurt during the whole race, like really hurt, I was having really terrible pain in one of my knees and I think you saw me going to the finish like I was truly limping <laughs> once I once I got through Epcot I was like well I know I'm gonna finish I just I'll limp to the end <laughs> I mean obviously we saw you finish I did really didn't think you looked like you were limping I will say you did not look like you were having a good time I wasn't I was not having a good time <laughs> So actually at the finish, um, in the finish shoot area, the balloon ladies actually passed me towards the finish. And I knew that they probably would. Once I got to mile 20, 
um, my pace slowed down so much. I was like, they're definitely gonna pass me, but hopefully if I keep moving, they won't sweep me. Up till that point, I had already reconciled that I would might be too slow. And at certain points, especially before we got to Hollywood, I almost wished that they would come <laughs> and sweep me. I was so miserable. The one thing that I kind of, I guess, regret about the marathon is I didn't have the like, that really accomplished like, oh my gosh, I did it feeling when I crossed the finish line. Still don't quite have that feeling, which is why I want to do another one already and <laughs> have been thinking about it. But um, I did still do it. <laughs> but it definitely gave me a lot of motivation and I feel like I learned a lot going into doing another one to where I think I can improve a lot. Yeah, the your first marathon is a very deconstructive process because as these things go wrong, even though mentally you might have planned these and watched a million of these videos, obviously you know your body better than anyone else and your body's going to be different from anyone, including us, talking about these. So you learn so much about things that go wrong and even knowing at the time like what you needed to do to fix them almost just makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, you did finish. You made it all 26.2 miles, yep. which is so impressive because that is such a massive distance and that's such a huge accomplishment. I think what an even bigger takeaway out of that was that you already said, yes, I want to do this again and I want to take what I learned and I want to try to challenge myself to do better next time. Yeah. Well, and I just, and I, I just want that feeling that feeling when you cross the finish line because I've had it before I've I've had it in my half marathons I've had it in the 10ks that we've done and I am so sad that I didn't have it at this on um, this one so I want to do it again it was really hard to walk from the finish line out to where you were like that was even harder I was like oh we just did this 26 miles I have to keep walking um that was that was tough <laughs> And I was really glad that we had the oofus. <laughs> My feet were so tired. Would you consider doing Goofy or Dopey next time? Yeah, definitely. I believe I am resigned to at least doing Goofy. I think that'll be fun. Especially if, uh, because we have this whole year of races um, and training to build on. Whereas when I started training for this one... I had basically stopped running for almost 18 months, so when I picked up the training, it was basically almost like starting over as a new runner. I mean, I had some of the technical knowledge, but I didn't have like the base anymore. Whereas going into this year, I have a good eight months of, of base already, and we're just building and, and doing a lot of more focused training. So yeah, I definitely think I'm in for Goofy. Definitely considering Dopey because it's the anniversary year and I think it'd be fun. So, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe definitely yes. <laughs> a marathon, I think you said this in one of our conversations a little while ago, a marathon isn't something you can hack as well as a half. The, the distance and the training is so, so important and it's uh, is an accomplishment. It, it's... <laughs> I always hesitate to say this, but it's, I really feel it's true that if I can do it, almost anyone can do it <laughs> because I'm not a naturally athletic person. So if it's ever something you've wanted to do, I think it's definitely worth the time and the effort that it takes to get there. Thank you and congratulations. I think you did an awesome job and I definitely think you should feel like you did it and you crushed it, even if you want to do it better, which is I think only natural for people that run and race to want to work on getting better. Oh, yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this one. We've got tons of other videos from Marathon Weekend, including a recap video as part of our Run Disney Rundown series, as well as race videos from all four of the races, 5K, 10K, half, and full marathon. So make sure to check those out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that fun youtube -y stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.